Hello, Mark Red Larson here for the Dreamcatcher Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Today, my guest is Jack Murray from Portugal. How are you doing today, Jack? I am great. Um, I'm so excited to be here, and I can't wait to do this podcast with you. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to, glad we are we got to get this all together. So, um, so what part of Portugal are you at? Um, so I'm in Lisbon, the Lisbon area, like. 30, 40 minutes outside of it in an area called Sintra, a very old but beautiful part of Portugal. Nice, nice. So, so okay, we were just talking, and you're not originally from Portugal, so uh, where, where are you from originally? Um, so I'm from, I'm from Canada, Nova Scotia, so I've been living in Portugal only about a year and a half now, and okay. it's a really crazy adventure, adventure, but I'm loving it. No, no. So uh, what was the reason why you went to Portugal? Um, so from a very young age, I've always wanted to become a professional football or soccer player. So when my academy told me that um, if I really want to go after that dream, I would have to, um, a good idea would be, go, would be going to Europe before the age of 13 because, oh, really? okay. um, because the level of competition is so high. Um... And then after COVID... Um, when the world opened up again, my parents and I decided that we wanted to live in Europe. And my parents had already wanted to live in Europe for a long time. So when the Perfect. world opened up um, and I was 13, we thought it would just be a really cool, fun adventure to just go for it. Um, so, yeah, so that's how uh, we are in Portugal right now. Okay. So so is Portugal like you thought it would be? Um, no, I didn't <laughs> think it would be like, no, it's not at all what I thought it would be. Um, there have been so many surprises, even from just like what, like, um, everything from the food to the culture, to the weather, I to bet. football, it, there's been so many different surprises. Like I, I thought, bet. um, like, cause I knew Spanish, some Spanish going into, um, Portugal. Sure. Okay. I could like communicate decently well. Sure. Yeah. I would think, um, yeah. And the first problem was that one it sound when they talked, it sounded like one super long word, and two, um, they didn't love it when I used Spanish. They preferred I use my English. So that's um, interesting. Okay, yeah. that's that's very interesting. So, so do most people know English there? Um. So before, if you're fifty or over, the second language was French, but not too many people know French. My mom speaks fluent French. Okay. Um, but usually, like the younger generation, I'd say people from thirty. Um, and downwards, they speak, well, a majority speak pretty good English, but um, wow. it, it honestly depends. If you're like in the Lisbon city center or the Algarve, there's a lot more English. Um, that is really like, interesting. Yeah, since I'm like 30, 40 minutes outside of it, um, there's less English. And like, I actually live in kind of like a medieval town, like really, really small, like 50 oh, wow. years. Cool. Yeah, so um, no one really speaks English here. It's very uncommon. Okay, that is so interesting. That's kind of like until you go to an area you really don't know, you know, it's very much. Yeah. So, so when did you get interested in soccer? Um, so I've always loved to kick a ball. Even like I have, like my parents have video of me of like kicking ball, at, like eighteen months old, and I oh, just you really did. <laughs> yeah, so I've always really loved it. And then like even, um, I love the Spanish football, like tiki taka, that style. So okay. even um. So that's part of the reason I learned Spanish. But I loved watching Spain and like the Spain School and Generation from 2008 to 2012. Okay. Um, I loved watching like that generation, even though I was only four. But I, even as the years progress, I always like to watch Spain. Uh, so it's always been something that's been around me. Yeah, that's cool. No, actually, I'm um, talking about soccer. My wife and I were in Italy about a month ago. And uh, talk about they, we were down in Naples and they were celebrating, they'd won, you know, soccer and they know how to celebrate about it like Americans do at 4th of July. There was lots of fireworks, I can tell you that. So, um, yeah, that's, I mean, so in Canada, is soccer popular? Um, definitely like the biggest sport is hockey. Oh, that makes uh, sense. And then the rest of the sports, it's kind of like, it's very easy to do like summer soccer. Um, and then there's like basketball and baseball, but it's not a big sport in Canada. Now it's getting bigger and more popular. Okay. Uh, I think a lot due to the like the national team successes. Um, True. But it's still like a smaller sport in Canada. Okay. 
Yeah, kind of like United States, I think, too. So, okay. Yeah. So I've been looking at, you, I've been reading your profile and stuff. So you, uh, you've you done, you do amazing things. I mean, I was just looking at your power now. and But you were earlier, you were sick as a child yeah. Or yeah. when you were younger. Yeah. Um, so when I was four, actually, I got diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. Oh, and wow. that actually severely affected my motor skills, which is fine that now I play elite level soccer. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Cool. Yeah. So firstly, like, um, it was kind of challenging because my, the doctors in Canada first couldn't figure out what was wrong. And then we had actually had to end up going to the States to first figure out what was wrong and then get treatment. Wow. Um, but I think like, even like as a four-year-old, it's not super fun to have to like go to clinics. Do no, all no, no. So, um, even like uh, doing, going to those things, I think you learn something from every challenge you face. Yep. And like someone I really admire, Lisa Nichols, she says, uh, every time you bounce back, you bounce back to something you didn't have before. I think that's really evident. And mm -hmm. like, even from that difficult experience, I learned how to talk through my emotions. I learned to be grateful that people were trying to help me. Yes. Um, and a lot of things like that. And like the micro joys, like going to Santa Claus parade before having to go to the doctor. So oh, good. Awesome. <laughs> You were such an awesome. Uh, I just love that. You know more, and you are a level that most adults don't get to. And that is so, and I do agree with the challenge. So, um, so how long did you deal with that? Um, so, I still deal with it now, but it's yeah, a lot okay. more under control. Like sometimes it will flare up when I am in, like uh, when I'm inflamed, like with the cold or sickness. Oh, okay. Um, but for the most part, it's for the most part, it's a lot better now. Good. That is very good. So, okay. So is that what you got you on your journey? I mean, I can tell you like to help people a lot. And um, so has that always been something you kind of wanted to do when I was looking at some other things with you? Yeah. And um, so how did that all start with what you're, what you're doing, are doing and have done? Um, so with my coaching business, primarily for like teen to other teen tween athletes, um, it's something that happened really naturally because okay. I kind of married my love of mindset and soccer together because from that experience i had already learned from mindset and my parents are both entrepreneurs uh, so they also had a big naturally yes um, yeah a big emphasis on learning about mindset so they gave Very me important. my personal development book like the four agreements at age nine um so it's definitely something that i think can really help you and i think it's like learning a language it's much easier when you're younger than when True. you're older and you're more set in yes. your way yeah i so, agree um, but it happened really naturally too, because like, um, in my last season in Canada, I, and even the scenes before that I had been becoming more and more of a vocal leader on the field. And like, I was always known as like the encourager or someone that would, that the, my teammates could go to if they needed like a pick me up. Yep. Yep. Um, so that kind of just transitioned naturally. And then when I came to Portugal, I realized how, that I, that how many teen and tweens could benefit from, you yeah. know. Uh, yeah. just like a little bit of help with mindset. So that's why I want to do this. Oh, that is so, so cool. So, um, I mean, so how many people do you coach at a time or does that vary? Uh, that varies. That varies. Um, normally it's, it can be like around a handful, but I always want to make sure that I don't have too many people um, on my plate so I can provide like the most value to the people that I'm working with, especially since I also have to keep up with studies and soccer and yes. all of those things. Well, you got a full plate there. Yeah, that's for sure. So, so, um, so I mean, my gosh, so how did you learn your mindset? I mean, for your parents, obviously a little bit, but how did you get to the point where you are at, at 14, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so like I said, my parents are both entrepreneurs. They've never uh -huh. really had a traditional job. They work for themselves. Uh -huh. So obviously they played a massive part in that, yep. but also having really good coaches, like my coach, since I've been four and okay. coach I was 13. Oh, wow. Um, she was a former professional soccer player. She played uh, as a goalkeeper. And she really, she really emphasized being, um, like having a good mindset, being positive and things. And I think um, it's just something that has also grown naturally with my parents. Yep. You're just surrounded by it. Yeah. <laughs> just, I mean, and your coach, I mean, that's awesome to have a coach that long too. Yeah. So yeah. that is so cool. So, um, what do you, if I may ask, what do your parents do then for, for their businesses or their entrepreneurial adventures or journeys? Yeah. So they work together. They're both internet marketers. Ah, cool. Cool. So do you have any siblings? 
Um, yes, I have a younger brother. Um, okay. Henry, who plays soccer here now, too. Okay. So is he on uh, the same journey as kind of you then, or is he kind of... Um, I, for him, he loves to play soccer. He loves it so much. But, I mean, it's still, like, even if you want to be, like, a professional footballer, it, you still, I think, still at that age, you're still so... You, you play with toys, and you do all yeah, the yeah. things. So, for him, I'm not sure if he's going to be a soccer player. He's what he time wants to tell, to yeah. But he has, he has time to figure it out. And okay. Well, the most important thing is a bad Yeah. Age. So um, I, I usually ask what your what your dreams are when you're younger, but um, so okay, ten years ago, well, was your dream to play soccer? Yes, it was to play soccer, and it's I've always wanted to like be um, be able to play soccer in like uh, an academy in Europe because like um, just you know like with watching from being from watching Spain to having coaches telling me like you should go and like see Europe and experience that. Yes. Um, and when they first told me that, they meant it as more of like a camp or a trial. Oh, right, camp. right. Yeah, we kind of just dived right into it. Before that, hey, came. isn't that the way to do it? <laughs> I think that is. So, so okay. Are you going to be the like? I mean, do you do public speaking? Uh, yes, I. I, have I would to. guess that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah I have some public speaking. Okay. So, um, are you the next Tony Robbins, or would you somebody like that that you would like to? Would you like to do something like that? Yes, I would honestly love to do something like that too, to be able to impact more teens and tweens um, in general for the better. Because I think what Tony Robbins and like, I love Dean Graciosi. Yeah, me too. Nichols, uh -huh. I, I love all of that. And I think what they do is so, so great. And I think they're sending like out really good messages and really empowering messages as well. So that's something that I would definitely love to grow into in the future. No, and I have no doubt you'll you you surpass them. So, uh, have you seen? You said you've been to Vegas. Is that where you did you see him in Vegas? Um, uh, no, I did not see him in Vegas. No. Okay, I thought maybe you'd, you'd seen him there. Actually, that's where I saw him. Um, so, I, I I what's funny is I kind of joke about this. Is my mom um would list we my parents were at um a Tony Robbins like event like he came right. to know for for okay. short I think, um but I was still in the womb, so I say, I joke that I, I've, like, the mindset. Is that, oh, awesome. <laughs> you really started early. Yeah, I really did. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So, okay, what does look like when you get to be 18, or what, I mean, I, I'm sure you have a plan. So, um, what, what does the future look like for you? I'm sure maybe some more soccer, but. Yeah, um, so definitely soccer, I want to improve that. Um, I want to improve that a lot um be on the brink of being able to go pro um or already pro at that point and then okay. also want to continue to like my coaching business um and impact more teens and tweens um for the better and things mainly things that fit into those two yeah that is so cool so your mom and dad your whole family must be proud of you I mean, I just, I, it's honor to talk to, it's an honor to talk to you. So, um, I have definitely been looking forward to this and, um, you, so you need to expand. You need to be seeing the teens and tweens. You need to go to, to the adults. Cause like I said, you know, more than most adults, especially with mindset, you know, cause so many people, I always tell everybody, it's like most people aren't living their dreams or living their fears. Yeah. And, it, and it's just like, or they's like, oh, I'm too old. Or there's always something, you know, yeah, that they yeah. can't do it. And it's like, yes, you can. Everything's possible. The word even says it. Yeah. So would you ever expand or have your um, own line of products and, I mean, coaching all over the world? Um, that would definitely be a dream. And I think definitely in the future, uh, that would be definitely a cool thing to do, especially um, because I think uh, – I believe in like lifelong learning. So oh, wow. Me too. Yes. anyone can um, learn anything at any age. Uh, but I think like, especially like limiting beliefs can be so hindering, yes. I find. Um, and like, even for like my coaching business, one of the biggest things for me was I'm too young, especially since I got yeah. the idea like when I was 13 and I'd be coaching like people that were my age, maybe one, two years younger or right. older, right? So it's definitely, it's, that was definitely something that I had to bow with 
battle with uh, when as I started this. Sure, and I can see that because you would have gotten pushback from people thinking, "Oh, you're just a kid." You know, I could definitely see that too. So, um, so what's something else you want to learn that you you haven't done yet, but you you're wanting to learn? Um, so I def something that I'm looking at doing now is I'm trying to get my NLP certification. Because oh wow! Okay. My parents know a lot about NLP. They're not uh -huh. NLP certified, but they know a lot about it, and I think it's a fantastic tool. Um, especially mm -hmm. because I think too. Even it helps you learn about other people and also it helps you become because I think I think also like if you don't know a lot about body language, your body language can um, like conceive can you can show off in the like wrong way, like especially like your body language can yep. betray you if you're feeling yep. unconfident. And it's good to know these kind of things. That will help you. Yes. No, I, I learned the first time I ever had anything to do with NLP was in San Diego in 2018. Otherwise, I had never heard of it. So, but, well, your body language says you're confident and, uh, <laughs> and your smile is awesome too. So, um, uh, I just, I, I'm just, a, so, okay. Are you, I mean, are you still in school? How does the schooling go over in Portugal? Um, yeah, so I have been because of my autoimmune disorder, I was actually homeschooled. So I okay. for um, up until now. Okay. So will you grad? I mean, do you graduate normally then when you're homeschooled yeah, or? Yeah, yeah okay. I gradu I'll graduate normally. Okay. So college or would you go to college? Um, I think that def. I think that um, depends. I think that it's definitely yeah. um, a cool avenue that I want to explore more. Um, but I also am thinking about possibly playing like soccer in college or going straight into pro yeah, uh, or, you know, going pro and then doing college after. And there's a whole yeah. bunch of different varieties and ways you could go about it. So I yeah. haven't decided yet. <laughs> well, and you've still got a ways to go. Yeah. And like you say, I mean, each, each person has their own journey. You'll just, you'll know more as you get there. So, um. Uh... No, this is um, I, <laughs> so cool. So, um, are, how long do your coaching sessions last then, or does that vary on the person? Um, that varies on the person, but I would say normally between usually forty minutes to like forty to fifty minutes. Sometimes it'll go thirty minutes or an hour. Um, okay. But normally it goes from 40 to 50 minutes. Okay. And you, a time period, like a, a month or a week, or is it just one time uh, when you're doing it? Or just one coaching session? Is that how you, or maybe it varies um, too? So definitely like if they want to do just one-off coaching sessions when yep. they need it, uh, I can totally do that. But normally if I'm working with teen athletes, I take them through something called the MAP method. And okay. that's... Um, a method that I've created myself, and that's basically awesome. a framework to help you. It's it's it lasts for ninety days, and it's all about your mindset, um, attitude A, and performance P. And it's about cool. tweaking your mindset and attitude so you can perform at your very best. Um, because something that I like to do is I want to help you when I work with you. I want to help you, um feel being and performing at your very best. So through 90 days, we work on some of the big limiting beliefs, challenges that you have, and then also towards like performing, getting the results and performing at your best. Um, so, and I was also reading about something, Empower Now, it was something that was on yeah. your Facebook. So what is that exactly? Um, so Empower Thought. So that was, uh, okay. that was a prob that was probably like a month ago. And I I was a guest speaker for a nonprofit organization that helps bridge the financial gap between um, teens and teens like families and the professionals that can help them. Out in wow. Any way. So okay, I gotta ask: you, Is there anything that intimidates you? Um, yes, there are things. Okay, um, but you I don't think... come across as ever have anything like that. You're so confident. I love it. So yeah. Um, I think definitely something that I've talked to people about to gain more confidence um, is to work on your self-belief. Because yeah. for me, um, you can work on confidence, you can work on self-esteem, and those things go hand-in-hand -hand with self-belief, of course. But I think mm -hmm. self-belief is the most um, crucial step, and I think that's a step that 
maybe some, because you hear a lot of people saying, let's work on your confidence or let's work on your self-esteem. Right, right. Definitely things that overlap between those two and self-belief, but I think that's the one that maybe is not talked about as much. And for me, is really, really powerful. Very cool. So, um, no, I mean that, um, I'm going to have to hire, so I, can I hire you? <laughs> I would love to hire you. Uh, well, your vibration is just, uh, so, okay, in your downtime, probably soccer is probably kind of like your downtime. What do you do, like to do when you're just kind of chilling? Um, so, right now, I mean, it varies because I have mm -hmm. a lot of interest from uh -huh. psychology. I love psychology, which is part of the reason why I'm so into this, like, coaching and the neuroscience and stuff. Right. I love, like, um, MBTI. So I'm an ENFP and like okay. and those things because I think it gives you, it helps you understand yourself better, which can be a really valuable tool going forward. Um, so I love learning about that and seeing and understanding how different people tick. Okay. Um, and then I, I love to write and read as well. I read like a lot of fantasy fiction and cool. I also write. So which, are you writing a book or just kind of journaling or? Um, so I journal every morning and every night. I okay. think. And I have specific prompts for the morning and the night. I think it's a good way just to journal out your thoughts because I think um, it's a really good habit to do. And then right now I'm writing um, a book. I'm not sure if it's just going to be an ebook or physical yeah, copy. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to be writing an ebook about the four pillars that it takes to be a complete athlete. And that's also something that I talk with my clients about to help them. Cool. So it's a win-win there. You can carry me both areas there. So, um, so do you like, do you play, you said football. I mean, is it regular, like American football or football? Uh, like, yeah, soccer. It's like okay, soccer. That's okay. Like, I didn't yeah. know if you liked American football or if that was just soccer there. Okay. So do you like any other sports? Um, I, I like, I, I like playing tennis um, okay. a lot. Um, I don't play too, too much, but I do like to get out and play when I can. And then I do find basketball is a fun store, sport to watch as well. Okay. Okay. And I was seeing that you have a YouTube channel, right? Yes, correct. So what's, what's the name of your YouTube channel? Or maybe you have more than one. Um, so right now my YouTube channel is called Jack Murray TV. And there right now I'm going through a transitional period where I'm going to be posting some new content with a new, kind of a new vision. But on there right okay. now, there is a lot of interviews that I've done because I have an, like another like business side hustle called CPL Fever, where I have interviewed a bunch of professional soccer players and professional coaches from Canada's professional league that only started in 2019. Wow. Um, okay. So I've gotten to interview some really cool guys. I've interviewed current Canadian men's national team player, Joe Waterman, okay. former men's national team player, Ian Hume, um, and a bunch of other really high level and skilled players and coaches cool. from the CPL. That is so cool. So where did you learn? I mean, you speak so well. Uh, I, I definitely wasn't speaking that way at 14. So how did, I mean, have you always kind of spoken well? Or, I mean, you um, just very well. I, it's definitely something that I want, that I think um, that I've tried to work on and want to work on because, like, for a long time, I always said, I'm trying to work on this still because I do say, um, still a lot. Oh, I can really I'm trying to work on saying that less. Um, but it's it's definitely something that I've always, like, public speaking, I've always felt a rush doing. Like, I remember even, like, in homeschool groups, there would be these challenges, like, Egyptian, like, ancient Egypt and there'd be like different stalls. Like you could, one stall would be showcasing the medicine, different mm -hmm. weapons. Mm -hmm. um, I love to cook. So I would always go to be like on the cooking team and cool. I would do these big announcements um, about all the different recipes that we had made. And even like ah. the experiences like then, it's kind of just a fun thing that I've loved to do um, okay. for a long time. So what's one of your favorite things to cook? Um, one of my favorite things to cook um, that's, God, that's a hard question. Yeah, uh, maybe many things. <laughs> um, I think something that, something that I've only cooked once, but I've, I loved it when I made it. It was back in Canada. Um, I made paella, which ah. is like scallop, shrimp, um, chorizo, rice. Yeah. Uh, so I've made that, which was okay. really I really liked. I've made traditional Portuguese food like bitok, not traditionally. Okay. Um, the traditional food, which is like rice, um, 
French fries, uh, a steak with an sunny side egg over it. Um, sometimes okay. with it. Um, but there are uh, a couple different things that I like to try out. Wow. Test no, that is so cool. So what are some others, maybe you don't have time for it. What are some other hobbies you have? And cooking um, obviously is one. And... Um, so like I said, I love to write. So I will write a lot. Like I also, like I said, I love to read fantasy fiction. So uh -huh. all, I've also written like short stories based off fantasy fiction. And I'm currently writing a, a fantasy fiction story right now. Um, it's awesome. definitely something that's more on the back burner, but it's something that I want, a project that I want to continue to work on. So what do you sleep? Um, <laughs> I, I am a night owl, so I don't love to sleep too much. Okay. I, I do end up doing it. Okay. Well, which is good. That's important too. That is so cool. So, okay. So, um, let's say by the time you get to, I mean, let's say 30, what, mm -hmm. are, what are some goals you would have by then that um, you would like to accomplish? Yeah. So be a professional soccer player. Um, I want to be a published author. It's something that I've wanted to do since I was like nine, 10, 11. Um, so I'm hoping to complete that this year though. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Getting that quite a way before 30. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, soccer career. What is the lifespan of when does that usually? Um, the parameters? So usually um, is it, you can start anywhere like a normal uh, start date to like make professional debuts anywhere from 18 to kind of like 21, 22. Um, sometimes in the lower leagues, sometimes in some top leagues. And then depending on how well you take care of your body and things sure. like that, while you eat, um, you can go to like probably like an average is about like early 30s. A lot of people, okay. but there are definitely exceptions while. to that rule. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Soccer, you've done your soccer, you got done. So what would be next? I mean, you kind of told me a little bit, but I mean, something you really, I can see you want to do things for, you know, to help people. What is something that is a, a huge dream that um, maybe uh, you don't even know it yet? So, but. Um, I definitely want to be able to go and speak all around the world and travel a lot because I love traveling. Yeah, like, okay. I like to oh, I was over I was like on over like 40 planes by the time I was three so like I love traveling I was like totally my high place and I'm super comfortable at the airport on the airplane mm -hmm. um so I, I want to be able to travel more and experience different cultures because I think yes. that's your eyes it does uh, and then uh, another thing that I would love to do is be a mind valley speaker because I ah, probably, really yeah okay. there are people that I really like um, on the Mind Valley panel, like Jim Quick, Florencia Andres, um, Lisa Nichols. So I would love to do that eventually. And also like, you know, go out um, and like, like there is, there's some traveling involved in that, but also being able to speak. Yeah. No, I can see you up on stage like Jim Quick and the, I mean, I can, uh, you'd be the, you'd be the, the person that's up there, everybody's coming to see there too. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, you would be. So, uh, so where's some places you've traveled? Where are some places you really, um, your favorites? So I love Las Vegas. Like I love, love, love. Yeah, Vegas. I do too. Um, it's very hot, but I love it. Um, I remember one time, like I was really, really young and I, there was a casino mm -hmm. and I, and I love, and I like to hear the sound and all the bright lights. I thought oh, it was yeah. like, cool. Like uh -huh. I was yep. like, Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I just want to look at all the bright lights. And there um, are a few of those. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. And then I, I've traveled to, um, I'm in Portugal. I've traveled to the Algarve. Um, I've traveled, I've done a lot of road trips to like go through Canada, going to Ontario. I've been to okay. New York, California. Um, we've driven through South and I'm pretty sure South and North Carolina. Okay. Uh, into Georgia. Uh huh. Uh, there have been quite a few places I've been in the U.S., but it's That's... the extent of my traveling has mainly been the U.S. and Canada. Okay. So you, you still have family in Canada? Uh yes. So okay. right now my grandmother lives in Canada, um, and we also have some family in the U.S., which is part of the reason that we have gone there. Do that. About. Okay. So do you get over the? Do you get to go to Canada and the United States very often? Um. The United States, it was a lot more before when we lived in Canada. Yeah, I bet. Um, every couple years or so, I would say. Um, and I've only been a year 
I've only been in Portugal about a year and a half right now, but I've gone back to Canada twice. Okay. Uh, one time for like two and a half months, I would say, two months. Oh, quite a while, okay. It's really funny how like you kind of develop old habits again, especially when you're back inside your house and you've lived for, for so long. Yep. Um, and then another time for like two weeks, a quick trip. So, okay. yeah. So cool. So, okay. Um, I, I, I deal with, I have so many friends that are in their twenties that are dealing with anxiety and all those things. How, how, it seems like there's a lot more than that with them when I was growing up. Why do yeah. you think there's so much anxiety in, it, it, it seems very prevalent in the United States. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't that way in Canada, but, yeah. um, um, I think at least some, I think for, it definitely depends on the person. Like sure. I've had, I've had like, and like for me, I like to get things done, like achieve things. Mm -hmm, um, sure. I like that feeling. So I've had anxiety about like not achieving enough or like not performing okay. enough in like games, but I think it varies depending on people. And I yeah. think a big thing is social media because it's so, social media is a fantastic tool. Right. If you decide to use it right, it's fantastic. It is. But it is also very easy to compare yourself and then yeah. make it too bad. So I think that's a big place where it comes. But I think there's also a lot, there's a lot of pressure on doing well in your studies and all the other responsibilities that people um, have. And, and I think it's just something that um, some, it's just a lot more common now because of the, because yeah. of the world we live in. So there's yeah. definitely more anxiety. That makes, that makes sense. Yeah. Where you can compare yourself before, before that you couldn't, not so yeah. easily, Lisa. So, yeah. so do you have your own podcast? Um, I that is some. So I have like the CPL fever, which is you can see it on my YouTube, um, and I also have, um, I also have it in podcast format, like just okay. audio in Spotify. Okay. Um, but the, having a podcast specifically for teen mindset is something that. I'm looking at currently. Um, okay. uh, some people have told me just to go for it already, uh, but that's only something, something that I've been thinking about. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, and you 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 have a lot of things on your plate to think about too. So I mean, so soccer season. How long is the season? Um, so it goes from October to June. They have one Ooh, really long, long season. Yeah. Um, so right now I'm in the off season. Uh, so the off season's like from July to like to like September, but then it's in September and late August, the preseason has started already and you still train in like June and like early July. So sure. early August right now is the freest month you've ha you have regarding for like soccer and like schedule. Okay, okay, that is so cool. So um, gosh, I mean, so what else would you like our audience to know about you today? Um, I think I do wanna say though, just yes. quick, I love the idea of this podcast, like Dream Catcher, oh, thank because you. I think it's a really, really cool concept and idea. And one thing that I would say that yes. I think a lot of people neglect, because I think like a lot of people think that being a dreamer is like good, but also it's like it has a bit of a bad rep because like it so does. I think it's like yep. all Eric Gary and dreamers. But something that I say to a lot of people is being a dreamer actually raises the level of possibility, which is one of the most Amen. powerful you. And then also the real, anybody that's achieved anything great has not been just a doer or a dreamer. The people that have achieved the greatest things are a mixture of both. So if you're able, yes. if you're naturally a dreamer, which is a, yes. really, is a really big advantage to have. And then you can just figure out how to get a bit more effective at doing these things. And high yep. achievement is all about optimization. So if you can figure that out, then you can achieve really great things um, based on your passions and things like that. And so much of it is just based off of resilience because resilience changes lives. Oh, and yes. um, an Australian women's team player who I really admire, her name is Haley Rasso. And okay. in the game, she, got, she broke three vertebrae in her back. Oh. Yeah. So... That she, she didn't know she would ever be able to walk again. And this yeah, was like yeah. a couple of years ago. Wow. And right now she's playing in the World Cup in oh. Austria. And awesome. she is one of the key players. So I think resilience and self-belief, if you put those together, along with the being a, being a dreamer and being able to get some things done, it's really powerful because 
there if Michael Jordan gave up when he got cut from his high school basketball team, what would have happened? Yeah. If Chris, if Cristiano yeah. Ronaldo gave up when the going got tough, got tough. Kobe Bryant, um, yep. anyone, Messi, they would not have gone to the level they've gone today. Exactly. So being resilient makes you makes it so much easier for you to achieve things, and it gets you. Um, it cuts out so much competition because a lot of people can't always deal with their um, resilience. But I think a yep. big misconception yep. people have about resilience um, is that you, when you're being resilient, you have to be like tough and you can't have fun in these things. But I think something that's really powerful to know is like about the micro drills, like a quick walk or um, I think, but yep. I think like, the most resilient people actually know that they can have fun. That they can have fun. Yes. Um, and that's what part of what makes them so resilient. They're not trying to be like all tough and like just like mm -hmm. I gotta get through this. They're yeah. they're taking breaks for fun and they're allowing themselves to be okay with that they're having trouble and they continue to push forward. Yes. Yes. You have to. I mean, that's the way you do have to, because, I mean, if it's going to be your lifestyle, you just has to be in that. And you have to resilient because life happens. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, if, if you let it stop you, you're you're done. I mean, you just got to. Yeah. And I just like, well, kind of the old leveling up thing. And um, everybody's like, well, when I get to this, I won't. You know, it's like, yeah, you'll have new challenges and have to yeah. be resilient on that level. And um Plus, each time, I think you even said it on your uh, Facebook. I mean, you learn, you know, it's like, I could do that. Talk about building your confidence. You know, it's just like, okay, I did that that one time. I can do it the next time. So, yeah, exactly. And, 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 and that's another thing. People are like, so when do you work and when do you play? It's like, it's all the same. You know, there is really no difference. I mean, I, I can be working and having fun. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, um, but yeah, I think they do get that mentality. They have to be, you know, push through and be tough and never have any fun. And, um you do. It's just the way. It's the way to live your your dream life. So yeah. very very much. So um, I'm so sorry, but I actually have to just plug this in. So I'll be right back. I'm so sorry. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. That's fine. Hi, sorry. <laughs> no, you are fine. That's why I like doing podcasts because everybody's like, you know, when I started, I used to have questions and was so kind of, you know, and now it's just like, I like to, to roll with the way life is. In fact, I had a podcast probably a couple months ago where the dog joined us. <laughs> the guy's dog, and it's like, which was Rosie. And it's like, he was all upset. It's like, no, I think that's great. You know, it's just like, oh, I want to make your cup too. So, um, yeah, thank you. I think really like having things around you that give you positive affirmations and like, yes, it's really powerful. So like it my is. cup, because this is going to be audio, so they won't know what it says, but my cup says lucky. And I uh -huh. think that's a powerful, and I think that it's good to like, think that you are lucky because it's like manifestation. And it you think is. you're unlucky. Well, it, being, thinking you're lucky is a lot better than thinking you're unlucky. So yeah. And I, I, I agree with that because, I mean, kind of what you bring about, well, what you seek, you find, you know, yes. and um, there's yes. so many people that is like everything's so negative now. It's like it isn't negative. It's, you know, it's always there's always been negative and positives. But yeah. um, when you seek positive, it's just like uh, two days ago, I helped with a, um, at, at the YMCA, a kid's camp. And everybody's oh. like, you know, knocking kids are not, you know, not the same as they used to be. And there were yeah. 78 kids and they were all awesome. You know, it's just like. Yeah, they they were they're they're just kids, and they're no different than you know they're really no different. Um, yeah. So, but no, it is, and people that are just like, well, I'm always unlucky. You know, that's probably why you are always unlucky because you put that, yeah. and, and your subconscious is always listening too. So, yeah. um, so I just, or they watch the news too much, and I don't know if it's that way in Portugal, but it's like. <laughs> Yeah, the news I try to stay away with. I stay informed, but I try not to take too much of that in because um, I just want to be around positivity. So yeah, life's exactly. too short not to. So yeah, like, um, 
it's the news is so negative now because they need you to click on it yeah. so it's like they try to catch the headlines it's not like what like so yeah yeah you know, you know, actually like my parents and i we haven't had cave we haven't had cable in canada for i don't know how many years mm -hmm. and since is in Portuguese here. Now we probably should be listening to the TV to learn better Portuguese, right. but we don't. Um, we sp I speak Portuguese, kind of. I, I I speak passable Portuguese, and we okay. should read the TV um, in Portuguese to learn better Portuguese, but we uh -huh. don't. Um, so we don't really listen to any cable news or anything like that. I'm with you. So so is Portuguese hard to learn? Is that? Um, I would. It's well, I didn't think it would be because. Me knowing Spanish, uh -huh. I thought they were right. very similar, and my no mom knows French, um, right. she knows Tagalog, so that's like mixed between island and Spanish, uh, uh -huh. it's the language of the Philippines. Um, so I thought between our English, some Spanish, French, and Tagalog, we'd be able to go into like a restaurant or something and right, know exactly right. what we're going to order. But when we first got there, we had no idea what we were ordering. We kind of just pointed to the menu and said, Ishtu, Ishtu, fast forward. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's kind of it's it's a language that's spelt really really similar to the rest of the Latin languages like English. Well, okay, okay. French. Um, yeah, because it's Latin, so yeah, so it's like English, French, Spanish, um, and all those languages. Okay. But the thing is, is that it's actually pronounced very different. Like, um, and it's very it's pronounced very different. Like they have. I'm not great at the accents between Spanish and Portuguese, but I'm gonna try. So like okay. this word called frio. Um so that means cold. So we would say in Portugal, estou frio. Um but in Spain they would say frio. Frio, I think. So okay. like the uh -huh. O are a lot smaller here and the vowels are a lot smaller. Like in Canada, my name is Jack. Jack. Okay. Big, right, big. right. Mm -hmm. But like in the States, any English speaking country, Jack, big A. But here it's Jick, Jick. Oh, so, so okay. Like my brother, Henry. Uh huh. Mary, Mary. Or um, my mom's name, Marie, Mary. Or uh, okay. my dad, Andrew. They have so much trouble with that name, Andrew. It's like, really? Okay. Andre. But it's uh. like adding the W is like, it's. It's like super hard for them to pronounce, but it's definitely a difficult language. And you also hear if I speak it a little bit, it's very harsh sounding. Like I thought it sounded Slavic when we first heard it. Okay. Uh -huh. and how many English speakers think that. Like you follow Portuguese, it's very difficult because the pronunciation is very different to other languages. Uh, yeah, the other languages. So you like I was speaking relatively fast, not as fast as they speak here, mm -hmm. but that it's like it's different sounding than if you okay. were like spanish or french so cool french. so so i'm gonna ask you are you working on any projects to help people right now any events are coming up or anything like that uh, like any like live or yeah, anything like that yeah um i i that's more of like a goal that i think would be more realistic in like five years time because i okay. don't have like the audience yet um, so I, I want to do that eventually, but I think, um, that's something that I'm going to need to work towards to build my social presence, um, and also have more money to advertise something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I have no doubt you will get there and then some, I mean, I know you will. So, um, yeah, yeah. I just, your vibe is so awesome. So, so do you, do you meditate and things like that? Um, so I like I, I'm. This could be because I'm young. I'm a kid. Um, sure. But I find it difficult to meditate. I just find it difficult to sit and kind of be with my thoughts, even though I like to journal and things like that. Right. Like, um, I'm quite calm, but I don't necessarily like to meditate. I've tried it, and the most I've stayed consistent with it is about a week, maybe a week and a half. Okay. Um, so something that I do, it's more. I actually, um, yeah, I actually learned this. Um, from a lady that I met online who's a super amazing coach. Um, okay. But she introduced me to something called positive intelligence. And basically, okay. learn about your saboteurs. And there are nine saboteurs and the main one, the judge. And then there are nine other accomplice saboteurs. And they are the things that are normally your greatest strength, but they, but your saboteurs play on them to make them your greatest weakness. So, for example, um, hyperachiever. Right. I am. 
Uh-huh. I would, okay. you know, when I, that hyperachiever. Um, so like the positives, you're very good at achieving things. Basically. Right, right. But, but you, the other flip side of the coin, which happens sometimes, is that you become, you need external validation or things like that, right? You need external validation. You can go into like, we're called tendencies. You can lose touch with your emotions. Mm-hmm. And I don't think those things happen or you can be very like image oriented. And some of those things, they're less, they're like less true than others or like, sure, okay. you like, like external validation. That was a big one. Like I wanted that. Sure. Like, I can understand that. Yeah. yeah. But the thing that I learned was like through, um, kind of, uh, it's, it's called like, um, like I'm trying to think of the right word. I'm just blanking on the right word right now. I can relate but what to that. do you do to kind of do that instead is you kind of like do these little exercises okay. uh, you when you feel like kind of stressed. So something that I do a lot, um, that I find is more helpful than meditation because you can use it when you're stressed and you sure, know, right. when you're alone and in a room, uh-huh. um, is like just rub two fingertips together and pay very, very close attention to the ridges and it brings you back to the present and then you can rub your whole hands together, or you can look out and then look and really notice the color of something or the depth okay. of something, or Changing your focus then. Really, okay. Yeah. Or really feel the ground beneath your feet, things like that. Those are little things that bring you back to the present and can calm you down. Like something that I wanted to learn was that to be able to stay calm when things really stressed me out. And I found that the finger thing was actually really, really powerful for that. Okay. Um, so that's what I do. I don't do meditation, but I do that. And I think it's, I'm going to say better than meditation. Like there's no knock against meditation, but I think for me, it works better. Yeah, and I think... You have to do what works the best for you, a person. Yeah. And yourself. So, and I like that because you would, you would really be focusing on that kind of getting your off the focus that you had. Yeah previously so i think that's really cool so um no i um so anything else that you're working on or that you would like the audience to know before we end today um i I i'm gonna share one other exercise i love to do that okay sure that'd be awesome um because we were talking about like self-belief and action so i learned this from the mind valley speaker florence andres okay Um, i think and she said in a talk online um it's about the total confidence pill okay it's a really interesting kind of phenomenon so basically you can do it in partners so okay what we could do it right now or you just say it to yourself right and basically for you have a time for 60 seconds you're going to tell the other person or yourself um your past accomplishments what you're proud of of yourself for and things like that that reaffirm your identity that you can that you're capable of like handling these stressful situations and like to prove to yourself that you have done these hard things in the past. And it's amazing because I did this and I was like, wow, I feel so much better after 60 seconds, just this 60 seconds yeah. of telling myself that I can do this. And like saying like, I did this, I did this, I did this. Right. And like accomplishments and feeling proud of these things. It was really, really cool. So I that think is. So like, I use a lot of things like that to help me like in the moment. Um, okay. like, exercise or the total confidence pill or other little things that I do to help me throughout my day if I'm feeling like stress or difficulty dealing with these things so yeah that's something that I like to use a lot that's pretty cool I mean you probably have so many things you've done since I mean well when you went through your your incident or what happened at four so I mean but you've been I mean so many different things in your really short life I mean so you have 60 minutes so can I ask you what would you say for in your 60 minutes uh, 60 seconds. Um, or 60 seconds, yeah. 60 yeah. minutes might be a little long. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say things like, um, I, I'm a, I'm a Canadian against like a lot of odds being able to play in the first division in Portugal. I, I was on, I was scouted in Canada as one of the top, um, 2008 midfielders. Um, things like, uh, Things like uh, being able to start my business, yep. um, not letting limiting beliefs stop me, um, being able to interview the commissioner of the Canadian Premier League, having yeah. an article about my business, CPL Fever, um, being able to go out there and speak with someone confidently with public speaking, uh, getting past my childhood 
illness yep. um, and things like that, that reaffirm that your positive identity about yourself. Cause I think yes. like uh, another little thing is that I think goals is fantastic. You should definitely set goals, yep. but if you want to also get to where you want to go, you can't just say, here are my goals and stick them on a fridge. And that's great. You can do that. True. Yeah. That can work. But yeah. I think what something you should do is you should try to shift your identity. And that's not saying like, I'm going to become this totally new person. But if you want to change a couple of things, like for a long time, I had a lot of trouble with discipline or consistency or focus. You so, did? Yes, I did. I would not guess that. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, and I still struggle with it sometimes. It's price. Um, yeah. So I still struggle with it sometimes, but it's gone better. Okay. So what I did was I did this identity shift and basically, okay. um, kind of reaffirming what I, my new identity wanted to be and doing like has setting up habits to do that, having affirmations, declarations mm -hmm. and things like that to change your identity because your identity is one of the most powerful things that there is. Um, Yep. I feel like I'm not explaining it great right now, but I hope you can understand what I yeah, mean. Yeah, I do. You're, you're doing great. No, I, you are. I mean, and I, I, I mean, it's kind of, you know, because I would never guess you would have problems with discipline the way you are today. And that kind of is like, I, th I find when you show that to other people, it's like, okay, he struggled with it. You know, maybe I'm not all lost, you know. I just, people, they, they resonate with them rather than just being told, you know, it, being honest and open, you know, I think yeah. that is so cool. And, and I think, like, authenticity is one of yes. the greatest um, gifts because, like, yes, someone can be giving you great advice, but if yep. you don't feel like you can connect with them, and I, yep. that's something I want to do in, like, my coaching sessions with people, I want to be very open about the experiences that I've had. So it's not like some kid is telling them you should do this because i said so yeah i'm, I'm telling you this because i have experienced it and i yes. know what works and how hard it was so i understand what you're going through but this is what helped me yeah right so okay. authenticity is really powerful and like it is Rano, she is very open and very authentic on her instagram page um and things like that and i think that's part of the why reason why she has such a big following and that's something that i think so like, too um i've heard heard from other fans of her that like they love that she's so authentic um yep. so open about who she is and honest and i think that's something that's very admirable i think it is too because um a lot of people just put up a persona that what they think people want to see mm -hmm. and it's like no you need to be who you are you're an original you know nobody yeah. else is like you exactly so yeah. um it's actually refreshing to see people yeah. you know being real i think that is so so cool and um and you're you're um you're a real dude. You really are a very real, and I love that. So, and if there's anything ever that I can help you with, just let me know. Uh, I would love to help you with your journey. You are such an awesome man, and um, yeah, I just um, I think unless there's something else you want to say, I'm going to end the podcast there. Um, I hope that maybe you come back on a future podcast. Yeah, that I would love to come on a future podcast because okay. I can tell you right now this. Um, podcast I really enjoyed doing um, and I know you complimented me on your vibe but I think your vibe is also awesome thank um, you. and I think that this was a really awesome podcast so thank you so, Jack, yeah, I, I appreciate that greatly so um, no and I look forward to seeing I look forward to the next years uh, <laughs> as you I mean no I I look back to where I was 14 and what you are at 14 um, yeah, you're going to be up on stage with all, I mean, all those people at Mind Valley. And, um, yep, no, I have no doubt about that. So, so on that, I'm going to end the Dreamcatcher podcast for today. But thank you again for being our guest. Um, look forward to keeping in touch with you and, yes, and to our um, doing another podcast in the future. So, yes, that sounds so, awesome. So, but uh, thank you and have a good rest of your day. Oh, you're, you're, good evening, I guess. Yes. I mean, you know what? What time is it there, actually? Um, 8.02 right now, p.m. Okay, so evening. So, okay, so yeah. have a good evening then. So, and yeah. um, we will talk soon and um, take care. Yes, take care. Thank you. Mm -hmm.